Welcome to EWA's FinLit Podcast. EWA is a fee-only RAA based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We hope all listeners of this podcast will benefit as we deep dive into uh, complex financial topics that we will make simplified for you. And we hope that this really serves as a catalyst so that you can make the best financial planning decisions uh, for your family and also save time. Welcome, everyone, to this week's uh, FinLit by EWA podcast, joined here by Jameson Smith. And today we're ta- tackling a very timely topic of when to when's the best time to refinance your mortgage if you're at a high rate. Um, and we've seen rates starting to come down already. Um, is it worth weighing the con of paying a closing fee? Typically, we see 50 to 100 basis points of the loans. If you've got a million dollar mortgage, expect to pay five to ten thousand dollars of a cost to refinance. Is that worth it to make the rate drop? Uh, we're going to talk about the pros and cons and, and when to, what the right questions, the right analysis are uh, to go through with that. So, uh, James, before we get started, any any uh, timely events that you want to discuss first? Timely events? There's a lot of events going on we could talk about. I don't know. What do you want to, what do you want to we'll discuss? We'll just hit a quick one. I don't think everyone wants to just talk about mortgage rates dropping. So, sorry to put you on the spot, but you got to come up with something. Um... Okay, so what's uh, well, we've talked about this in the past. So what's the um, what's the update on the on on your what are you talking about? First? What's the update on your um, your your gin, your golf index? Where where do we stand as the Ooh. as the as the season's coming to an end? That's a sore subject, Jameson. I think I'm I I got down to a six something um, after my so I had, I had a labrum surgery called FAI back in November four months before I could swing a golf club. So from April, I think to June or July, I got down to a six. Um, unfortunately I had some flare ups, not surgical. So I'm still good <laughs> with the bursa sac apparently and the, uh, hip flexor. So I think now we're back to like a high eight, low nine, mm. but we're going to get it back down to a six before the season end. I'm public accountability right now. How about you? Where's your trending up? It's not good. Uh, was playing a lot of golf in June, July, four or five times a week. Head up in the evenings, hit balls, play around. I was playing well. My lowest was a twelve. What are you right now? Like Thirteen six or something. That's Just a pretty low gap for a. Uh, so what's your goal by the end of the year, and then what's your goal? Well, my goal this year? year was to get under ten. It's still in the cards. I just have to play more golf, which is really hard to do when you're busy. I've, what are you busy with? Working. So you're, it's my responsibility that you're not a 10 or a nine. <laughs> no, I just, just working a lot of stuff going on. So it's, you okay. know, it, it's just your, like anything. You just have to do it. Right. You what's your goal by the end of next year? Oh, I'll be single digits next year easily, but I'm still shooting for it by when's the gin shut off this November 1st or something. I think that's information. I, I built a spreadsheet on this to figure out what scores I need to, to, uh, to get down under a 10. It's basically like in my in my what do you need? on my course like I need like three or four like eighty to eighty two rounds like that that range so definitely need a spreadsheet which uh, <laughs> we're gonna record this if you're not watching this on the uh, if you're listening to this we'll 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 make it so you can listen to it but um, better if you watch it because I'm gonna be drawing on an iPad here so uh, just to start off. Traditional refinance, obviously, what? it's in banks' benefit. Okay, oh, I was gonna say, let's just give a lay, lay of the land on what's yeah, going on. You, you go ahead because I'm gonna go. Okay, full Matt, on. so Matt's like Rain Man with these numbers and the spreadsheets, way more detailed than I am. Um, so he'll go through the math, but basically, I mean, it's been a kind of a talking point for a couple years now. Like, when are rates gonna go down? And so we saw we're recording this. I don't even what I don't even know what the date is. September, mid September, mid September, something. Um, <laughs> there was a mortgage rate just dropped. Yeah, there was a. a Federal Reserve meeting yesterday, and they dropped rates by 50 basis points. Yep. So rates are starting to come down, they think, 25 to 50 basis points slowly over the next, I don't know, months, year. And yep. they're still, Fed's still targeting the 2% inflation rate, which we haven't seen yet. Inflation's dropped, it's not 2%. So bottom line, rates are high, expect them to come down. How fast? We have no idea. At what rate? We really have no idea. Um, so let's talk about the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. So... Um most people think, very simply put, if the rates drop, I should refinance because it's extra money per month. So what we need to take into consideration, though, is two things. One, well, many things. The first the first thing is if you're an arm and you can refinance from an arm to a fixed mortgage, um, 
generally with a lower rate. That's usually a good idea if you're gonna if this is your forever home. But a couple of things people don't realize, and they they're not honest with themselves, that the average American moves seven to ten times. Um, and I've read read different studies on this. So you move seven to ten times over your lifetime. I've already moved four. Yeah, I've I've looked back and I moved every two or three years over the the last last twenty years. Five years I've moved four times. There you go. Yeah. So I mean, most people don't realize that. So if you buy a house, is that behavior going to change? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you need life changes pretty quickly. So a lot of people don't realize if you look back, how many times you moved, you really have to give yourself a realistic time frame. So if you are going to be in this house until the loans paid off, it's just numbers. Right, we can just look at the numbers, but if there's a chance you want to upgrade or downsize, or uh, and you're going to move in the next couple of years, there's a very high risk of refinancing because refinancing you're going to pay 50 to 100 basis points. So let's just use a million dollar loan for example. Um, I just talked to a, a local banker here before this podcast at prep, and he he ran me a quote a 1.4 million dollar loan refinance that was going to cost the 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 person 13 thousand dollars to do it. So you know, basically 90 basis points. So let's just use a million dollar loan example. Um, and let's just say hypothetically, now I'm drawing the screen, someone's currently at a six and a half percent note, and we're just going to use a 30 year um, term loan. And so let's evaluate, you know, potentially refinancing to a million year, 30 year fixed at 6%. And then let's also compare that to a full 1% drop. So a million at five and a half percent. And again, also still a 30 year. So what we have to realize first is, okay, what's our monthly payment under these options? So at six and a half percent, this does not include taxes and insurance. The payment for this would be 63.20 per month. If we get down to 6%, the payment drops to 5,995. I'm just rounding numbers, by the way. There's there's obviously cents that go along with these. And then 5677. So right off the bat, I mean, this is a savings of basically three, three twenty-five a month here that you could put to work somewhere else, I'm sure. And then this is a savings of um, you know, six forty-two or six I'm sorry, six forty-three per month. Um so, you know, right off the bat, simple, let's just say this is going to cost us $8,000 to flip from this loan to one of these options. Well, right off the bat, we know that's 3600 plus, so that's $3,900 a year of savings. So basically, we need a minimum of two years in this example to break even. That's our break even point. So we're going to give up the $8,000 here. We're going to get the $8,000 back basically in two years and half a month, let's say. Um, you could also weigh the, the investing cost of this. So this money could be invested in the stock market, earning 7%. You could also invest this money. We're just going to use really simple terms for now. And then over here, um, you basic, you almost have a one-year break-even. So in either one of these, if you think, oh, 50 basis points, if I drop from 6 and a half to 6 that savings is so attractive. Well, if you're planning on moving in a year from now, you shouldn't do that. You're going to end up losing $4,000 because the closing cost of $8,000 are going to be greater than the the first year savings of $3,900. You need need at least two years to break even. Now, if you're dropping a full percent, once you're there a year, you're pretty much in the clear. Anything above that's profit. And then there's some pretty big savings. So let's just say you're there for five years. So if we just look at like what is left in the million-dollar mortgage after five years, and this first example will be $936,109. And the second example would be 93534. And the fourth example, it would be 924606. But then when you add in the fact that you could you're saving, you know, basically four thousand a year um, in monthly payments here if you're disciplined to save that, plus you have another twenty thousand dollars of cash here. And then in this example, you're saving um almost 7,700 a year. So almost, we'll just round up almost 40,000 if you invest that money on top of just having a lower loan balance, you're also going to have that monthly cash flow to either save or spend in some, some other way. So very clear if, if the time frame is, if we see a rate drop of fit, a half a percent or 1%, we've got a two year break even then a one year break even over five years, you de-risk a lot. Um, 
However, I'm going to bring up another option because what's going to be very tempting for people to do is you're going to see rate drops slowly is what the Fed has come out and say. So there's a rate drop available now for people that have secured a mortgage in the last 12 months. If you go refinance, there's you know, probably you know, 30 to 50 basis points you'll be able to get off your mortgage right off the bat. But another strategy would be doing what's called a home equity installment loan. And generally speaking, like let's say you bought a million dollar house and or you're, you have a value of a million dollar house, you have $750,000 mortgage outstanding. Well, you could go, and let's say that's six and a half percent. If how, you, how much equity do you have to have to do this? 30, 25, 20? Well, you need to end up with at least 20% left in. Okay. So for in this example, the, the first requirement for a home equity installment loan is now the taxes and the insurance are now, they're not escrowed. So these are your responsibility to set up payments through checks. So this right off the bat's a little bit of a pain, but um, not a big deal. If you have your mortgage paid off, you have to do this anyways. Um, with home equities, there's no closing cost included. So you could, you could switch now. Typically, the bank will make you, you take some cash out when you're doing this. There's got to be new money on the table so they can make more profit off the interest. So this example, like you could take, the ending result would be a $775,000 loan. Maybe rates have dropped, and now you're getting this for 5.5%. And so the end result is you go from a $750,000 mortgage to a $775,000 home equity installment loan. And these are over 25 years. This in the bank that we talked to would be a fixed rate. You're responsible to pay your taxes and insurance. And now you walk away with $25,000 of cash back in your pocket. And hopefully you invest that money as well. The reason I would, I would look at going this loan if you have over 20% equity established is you can keep doing this every year no cost as at no cost as rates drop. So then it, regardless of your time frame, and regardless of your, um, if you're unsure of your time frame, if you see like, I went from six and a half to six, now it's five and a half. Do I pay that? Well, no, you don't have to worry about it. You can just keep going down and down and down. So I wouldn't take all the equity available. Cause again, for them to do this, you need to have, if the house is worth a million, home equity installment loan has to at least be 800. It can't go over 800,000. So if you're max at 800,000, the rates drop again, you can't do it again. So I would be slow and careful and just take a little bit out each time, but you're going to save a lot um, in interest just by doing that hypothetically. Let me just run the numbers real quick. Like a 30 year, um, we have a $750,000 um, mortgage at six and a half, and if we just leave that alone for 30 years, you're gonna pay a total of $1.7 million in payments. So your payment, your monthly payment's 4740. Over 30 years, you pay a total of 1.7. Out of that 1.7, 956,000 of that's interest. So you paid more in interest than you did actually in the principal. And then if we flip this to um, a higher loan, 775, but we get a five and a half percent rate because we're patient, and we pay it off in 25 years, your payment doesn't really change. It actually goes up by $19, so $47.59. However, so basically almost neutral with the payment, but your total that you paid in is $1.427 million, of which only $652,000 is interest. So you save over you know, $300,000 in interest by getting two, a result of two things. One... You have 1% lower interest, too. Um, you're paying it off in 25 years instead of 30 years. And this is like pretty much a cash flow neutral move. And that way, if rates drop again, let's say to, you know we have that $750,000 or $775,000 um, mortgage, and then the next year it drops, and now you're, you take out an 800000 home equity installment loan because um, now you can get a rate at 4.5%. Now you get another, so you go from 775 up to 800, you get another 25,000 in your pocket, and now we're at four and a half percent interest over 25 years. You pay, so your, first of all, your payment now is 4446 a month. Um, it's actually lower, even though you have a higher loan amount, that 1% makes a difference. You have a lower payment. Over 25 years, the total you're going to pay is 1.33 million, of which 534,000 is interest. 
So again, you go from 956,000 of interest to 534,000, so over 400 and um, $22,000 saved. And then while you're making these moves from the traditional mortgage into the first home equity installment loan, the second one, there's no cost or risk of you to do this. Um, if you move in a year or two, no harm, no foul. You didn't pay closing cost. The only thing is, you know, a little bit of time and track and get to write a check to the, um, for the real estate taxes, school taxes, and then the, the insurance home, ec- the home, uh, owner's insurance, you need to just automate through an ACH from your bank account. So that's it. You know, so please reach out if you're, if you're considering refinancing a mortgage, you know, banks love it. That's how they make, you know, closing costs. It's an easy, in that example, $8,000 they'd make. Um, but be careful. Yeah. Make sure you take all ramp, all, all these considerations on the table, um, when determining if you should, if you should refinance. So bottom line, if you're going to live in the house for 10 ish years will most likely make sense. Even to pay the closing costs, yeah, yeah, if you're getting a lower rate, 100%. Thanks for tuning in to uh, our podcast. Hopefully you found this helpful. Really hope this is as beneficial and impactful to as many people uh, across the nation as possible. So hit the follow button. Uh, make sure to rate the podcast and please share uh, with any friends or family members that would also find this beneficial. Thank you very much.